Yes, great. Right. Hello. Um, thank you for coming uh, to listen to me talk. Um, I'm a little nervous, um, but uh, hopefully this will be of use to you. Um, so I'm here to talk to you about uh, cover art. Um, so I'm going to go through a couple of things. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about who I am and my background. Um, and then I'm going to go through something which is bearing my soul a little bit to you. Um, I'm going to go through the evolution of one of my covers and the mistakes I've made um, because I'm an author and a cover artist, so I do my own covers, um, which is always an interesting thing to do. Um, and I'm going to talk, the reason I'm doing that is to talk a little bit about um, one of the issues that um, I come up against with working a lot of, working with a lot of um, authors on their covers, um, and I'll go into that in a little bit. Um, then into a little bit about you know what's the best way to work uh, with your cover artist, and then I'm going to finish off talking a little bit about AI art because it's you know the buzzword at the moment. Um, so who am I? Um, so I'm Andrew. Uh, I'm an author and a cover artist, and but I started off as a freelance artist, um, and for a long time I was working in house for a company producing artwork that got printed on T-shirts. Uh, doing that kind of thing for a while. Um, that eventually transitioned um, into doing a more kind of photography side of things. I was doing their um, catalog for a while, taking photos of models wearing uh, the t-shirts. Uh, as a side thing, I ended up doing some uh, wedding photography for a little while and uh, you know, doing that side of things. Um, but that I always enjoyed both the art and the photography, and so I ended up kind of um, merging them together um, to do this kind of composite art. So I would go to um, comic conventions, I would take photos of cosplayers, and then like take you know Catwoman and cut her out and put her into Gotham City, you know that kind of thing. Now this probably reminds you of a lot of cover art um, at the time. Um, I was and uh, so. A little bit before this, I was uh, also writing. I published my first book in 2013. Um, and then in, I promptly forgot about it. And then <laughs> in 2016, I was like, I really would like to get into doing cover art for, for authors. And so I started doing some research into that and found out people actually making a living writing books, which was amazing to me. Um, so I thought, OK, well, I can actually write my own books as well. So um, I was. You know, start writing my books as well as you know offering my cover design services um, to people, um, and that's how I got into being a cover artist. Um, one of the first people that came to me and um, uh, got me to do his covers, um, you might have heard of him. I don't know; he's, he's not very well known, but is Michael Andale is anyone? <laughs> So um, he came to me back in the day. He'd had like three books out at the time um, in his uh, Catherine Gambit series, and he'd done his own covers up until then. And he was like, I "Quite like what you're doing, you know? Could you, you know, could, could you do my covers?" And obviously, I said yes. Um, and so I worked with him for a long, long time. Um, then there's also this uh, no-name author. I don't know who he is. Craig Martell, um, <laughs> you know. Nice guy. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I did Craig's covers for a, a while, did his uh, Bad Company series and his Nomad series, and obviously we all know Craig. He's amazing. Um, and then I've also worked with a few others, Barry Hutchinson, or better known as J.D. Kirk, uh, M.D. Cooper, uh, Mal, and more recently, the late John Hindmarsh. I was, uh, worked on his covers uh, before he sadly passed away. Um, so that's a little bit about my pedigree, so hopefully you uh, think I'm able to talk about this kind of thing. So, uh, as I say, I'm also an author. Uh, I have two pen names, uh, my actual name, uh, Andrew Dobell, and then my pen name, which I write British crime under. Um, and so I have quite a diverse uh, range of covers that I've uh, done myself. And this talk, um, I'm going to rip apart one of these covers. I'm going to bare my soul to you. Um, by talking about the evolution of one of those covers, where it started and to where it is now. So I would like a little bit of interaction uh, from you, so I might ask you some questions. Feel free to put your hand up or call out and you know get involved. Um, so 
One of the things uh, I'm going to talk about is one of the main problems that cover artists come up against when dealing with, with authors, and that is um, the author is often too close and too invested in their book. You know, you can't see the wood for the trees, you know, you're just so involved in it that it's hard to be objective about your cover. But that's okay, because I am too. You know, when it comes to my, uh, you know, working with other, with other authors, you know, I can be objective, I can stand back, I can, you know, help in that regard. But when it's my own covers, it's a lot harder to do that because I'm invested in my books. You know, I love my characters and I want them to, you know, look great on the cover and all that kind of thing. Um, so, as I say, I also get invested in my covers, so let's discuss getting a good cover on your book. And to do this, as I say, I'm going to look at the evolution of a cover, one of mine, uh, and all the mistakes I have made. So, the book itself was released in 2013. It was originally called Epic Calling, it's not called that anymore. Uh, the genre was urban fantasy, so modern day with magic, female protagonist, New York setting, and one of the main things I always like to highlight was uh, uh, the inciting inc incident at the start of the book, which is a werewolf attack uh, in an alleyway. So that hopefully gets some ideas of what you think the cover might look like in your head. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to show you the first ever cover I created for this book. There you go. <laughs> yeah, not great, is it, really? <laughs> so. Hands up, what's wrong with that cover? Yeah, it's dark. Um, so it's, yeah, so it doesn't tell you anything. It's too dark, so it's not good at thumbnail. Uh, it doesn't tell you what's in the book. Looks a bit amateurish, honestly. Um, the font choice is probably okay, kind of serif font, but it doesn't, I wouldn't say it really fits into the genre, you know, when you look at it on Amazon. Um, this particular cover went through two other uh, iterations. Um, so you have this one, you know, the text is a bit more readable, uh, but it's still too dark, doesn't really tell you what's in the book. Okay, font choice, etc. Um, and then, the, you know, this is the third iteration. This one actually got published, this one saw, uh, this was what it first went onto Amazon with uh, in 2013. Um, again, um, the text is probably a bit more readable, but it doesn't tell you what's in the book. Still a bit amateurish. Okay font choice, but still doesn't fit in the genre. Then in 2016, um, I started to look into things a little bit more you know, detail, looked into the indie market, the indie movement, what people were doing, and I had a change. So I ended up putting a model on the cover because when it, at the time especially, um, urban fantasy was very much about having it still is to a, lot, a large extent. It's about having you know, you know, your protagonist on the cover, have some magic hands going on, that kind of thing. Um, she's in an alleyway, which is better. Um, so what do you think, better, worse? Better. better, I think it's better. Still not great, but it is better. The text is readable, uh, it's better at thumbnail, tells you what's in the book. It's still a bit amateurish, but it is better. So let's talk about a little bit about one of the things where I got far too close to my books, and that is finding a cover model. Um, so as a photographer, I was able to hire models, take photos of them, and put them on, on my book covers. Um, and I always got them far too invested. Oh, she doesn't look exactly like the character is in my head. You know, I had a vision for how she should look, and it's just so hard to you know, find you know, the right person. The first person I ever t took photos of was Vicky on, on the left there. Um, and quite ironically, I went through several other people before I eventually came back to Vicky right at the end again. <laughs> so I should have just stuck with her, but anyway, never mind. Got, got there in the end. Anyway, so this was Amy, uh, uh, another uh, one of the models. So better or worse? Still a bit better, but still not great. Uh, the text is readable. Um, the font choice isn't really on genre, you know, urban fantasy tends to have more serif fonts, not sans serif fonts. Um, it does tell you what's in the book, you know, she's in an alleyway, got magic hands going on, uh, but it is a bit more, you know, professional looking. Uh, the next iteration on that uh, was this. Text is, you know, more readable, very readable, you know, in that regard, because, you know, going with the white, 
um, and, and, but the image was still the same. And then eventually I came back to uh, Vicky as my cover model, and so again, better or worse? Better. better, yes, I would agree. So in this one, I've really leaned into the, the idea of the scene, so you can see in the background you've got the big monster there in the alleyway, um, the magic hands, it's much, much better. But there's still issues with it. Um, the font choice wasn't right. Uh, again, you know, not seeing the wood for the trees. I'm far too invested in this. You know, I, I'm trying to figure out what works, but because it's just me in my room looking at the screen, you know, I, I'm not being objective about it. And then we finally get a bit closer to what it should be. Um, so first off, why, why did I choose green? Anyone got any ideas why I might have chosen green as a background color? Sorry? Exactly right. So it's a little bit of color theory. Um, so you, it's a, green is a complementary color to red. Um, so if you're not aware, so you've got three primary colors, red, blue, and yellow. And you pick one of those colors, you mix the other two, and that gives you the complementary color. So red is is color of her hair. So I thought by mixing uh, blue and yellow, that gives you green. Surround her with green, she should stand out. Um, I think it did work to a certain extent. Sorry? Yes. I completely agree with you. Um, so it tells you what's in the book, fits in the genre much better, works at thumbnail. The text is readable, and much more importantly, it's on genre. You know, you've got the, the swishers and whatnot coming off the, off, off the font, um, and it, it's just much more, you know, it fits more. Yeah? I actually like the costume Yes. It's like Absolutely, yes. You know, it, it was, it was better, uh, a much better cover. I still have a few more to go, though. That's not the current <laughs> cover. <laughs> You'll also notice I renamed the book because I, I, I unpublished it. It was originally Epic Calling, and I republished it under a, a new title. Um, so this was an iteration on that. Um, thoughts, better, worse? I don't like it. You don't like it as much. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. I'm burying my soul. Um, so I tried, obviously, urban fantasy is meant to be, you know, urban, that's the whole point of it, it you know, and so I thought, well, well, let's get a city background in there, get some buildings, probably moving away a little bit from, you know, the inciting incident thing, and just more about telling you about what the genre is, you know, but it's really important to, you know, see the cover and go, I know what that book's about. That's fine. Fair enough, good point. I. It was just one of those things I thought, oh, that looked cool. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's, it's, you know, new cover art, obviously, so it tells you what's in the book. Fits with the genre, city background, works at thumbnail. Um, then this is an experiment. This never actually saw publication, but I decided to have a go at, with a purely DAS figure. Do you know what DAS is? So it's a 3D software. Um, where you can kind of load up figures and dress them up and pose them and light them and render off images. And it, you know, so it, it's a cheaper way of, you know, getting a figure on your cover that looks like how you want it to be without having to do a photo shoot and hire a model and do all that kind of thing. Um, so this was an experiment uh, on that. Again, I've changed things again. Um, you know, author name really big across the bottom. You know, it's mo much more of a trad thing that than an indie thing. Better, worse? I'll, yeah, I think that's way worse. It never saw, pub, you know, never got published. Yeah, it looks a bit mean, doesn't she? Yeah, yeah, not not good. Yeah, yeah, the unicorn wolf. Well, in the in the story, the the werewolf that it's kind of a werewolf. It has a big kind of unicorn horn, so it's just yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The reason why I tried that, the reason why I tried that, I'll blame one person, that's Shane Silvers, because that's what he does. <laughs> so I thought, I'll try it that way around, see if it works. And I was like, no. Nah. <laughs> um, so we're on to what is now the current cover of the book. So here we go. Better or worse? <laughs> why? Why do you think it's better? Sorry. 
clean, yes? Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, hints at the werewolf attack at the start, yeah. So that you can see the city, yeah. yeah. You know it's an urban fantasy because you can see New York in the background. Um, so yeah, you know, back to you know, a photo model from the DAS figure. Um, tells you what's in the book, fits the genre, works at the thumbnail, tax is readable. Uh, it's an on-genre font, and it's, you know, it's hopefully professional looking. Yes? A power stance. Yeah, yeah, well, absolutely. I mean, that, um, forthright. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. Hello. <laughs> that kind of pose. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, who knows, I may change it again in the future. As you can see, this book has been through a lot of covers. <laughs> I'm never 100% satisfied with it, you know. That one? Yeah, you have that. Ta-da, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, so, <coughs> more recently, I've kind of gone full circle. I've gone right back to the beginning. So this is the box set uh, cover. And so I decided to go right back to something a bit more kind of s symbolic rather than literal. Um, so it's going right back to that original cover. Obviously, hopefully it's a bit more professional looking than the first one I did. Um, and, you know, the font's better, you know, it's much more readable, but yeah, it's just, I, f I find it quite interesting that you know, where I started, you know, back 10 years ago, I've gone right back round, you know, to that. It's just interesting. So, a couple of other cover evolutions. Sorry? No, no, it wasn't a bad idea. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't a bad idea. It's just the execution wasn't there, was it, really? So, a couple of other cover evolutions for you. So, this is my Cyberpunk uh, series, book one. Um, you can see the first cover on the left. Um, going through the couple of iterations. I've tried something a bit more thrillerish in that third one, um, but eventually went back to you know the character cover. Daz figure, because she's a cyborg, so she's meant to have a bit of uncanny valley about her. So, yeah. And then I thought this was in in interesting for you. Michael Andalay's first cover, so that's the uh, one on he created on the left, Death Becomes Her. And then, um, so there's three others, other, other covers in the middle there that I did. He's recently gone to G. Malinka to do his cover, and this is something that's really important that I want to say. Never feel that you are beholden to any one cover artist. Um, you know, I am totally fine with any uh, author client of mine coming to me and saying, you know what, I want to go a different direction. I want to go, you know, do something different with this book, um, and I'll, you know, go with someone else, or, or you know, someone come to me after being with someone else. You know, I, as an author, I get it. You know, I sometimes want to go in a different direction uh, with my books, and you know, just working with someone might not work for that book anymore, and you just want to go another way. And any professional cover artist will go, it's cool, it's, it's fine. You go a different direction, it's not a problem. So, working with a cover artist, and what is the best way um, to work with someone like me? Um, so, what are the four things, <coughs> what four things does a cover need? I've probably given you some hints talking about my covers. So what, in my, in, certainly in my opinion anyway, what four things does a cover need? Title. Sorry? Title. title. It, d it needs a title. <laughs> yeah. Readable. That's definitely one of them. Yeah. Works as a thumbnail, yeah. Sorry? Simple. Uh, well, let's go through them. So first thing, look professional, okay? You are competing, when you're on Amazon, you are competing against trad covers, big name indies, and your cover needs to look the part. If it doesn't look professional, it's going to stand out, but for the wrong reasons. So it needs to look professional. And obviously the best way of doing that you know, is to use a cover artist. That says, you know, if you're just starting out, um, you know, and you're 
uh, you know, not got the cash to spend on a hiring a cover artist, you might want to go for pre-mades, that's probably your next best option, get a professional looking cover that's, you know, looks the part. Communi it needs to communicate genre and stories. The reader needs to know at a glance what your book is about. You know, it's no good if they look at that cover and go, I don't, you know, don't know what genre it's in, I don't know what the book is about. Um, so it's really important that it communicates those things. It needs to blend in and use tropes. Um, so you might think you, cover, you want your cover to stand out, and you do to a certain extent, but it needs to fit in the genre. If it doesn't fit in the genre, if it doesn't look like the other covers on there, it's gonna stand out for the wrong reasons. When it comes to standing out, it needs to stand out because the, the, you know, the, the art is good, the cover is good. You know, that's where it needs to stand out, but not stand out in a bad way. You don't want it to stand out for the wrong reasons. And it also needs to use the tropes. And that is a case of going on to um, the genre that you're aiming at and looking at those bestsellers. What common things can you see between, uh, you know, amongst those covers that, you know, they're constantly using? You know, whether it's like with thrillers, you know, it's, uh, you know, the, the, sh the silhouette of the guy with a, you know, scenic background, you know, that kind of thing. Um, or with urban fantasy, you know, you know the, 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 the girl with the magic hands and that kind of, whatever it is, it needs to have those, those tropes. And finally, it needs to work at thumbnail. Because the way most people are going to see your cover is, you know, on the phone or on the laptop, a little image. And it needs to be readable. It, it shouldn't be a muddy mess. You know, it needs, you need to be able to tell what's going on. <clears throat> so what does a cover artist not need from you? So when you come to me, what are the things I don't want? The full story. The full story. I don't want to read your book. <laughs> okay? I do not need to read your book. And for a start, I, I don't have time. You know, I've got a, I mean, you know, we, we've either got loads of other co uh, clients to work with, we don't have time. That said, I have read books that I've done covers for, but, you know, usually in my own time, but, no, we don't need to read your book. That's one of them, I'll get to that. <laughs> um, we do not need a massive summary of your characters and your plot, you know, we don't need loads of information, in fact, that can usually hurt the process. Um, you know, so that's another thing that we don't need. Anything else before I reveal? Any other ideas? I see Jean at the back. Hi. <laughs> so, and the other thing is try not to micromanage. Um, most uh, interesting thing is that most readers don't care that much. Of course, you're going to have readers that really care about you know, what's on your cover, but the vast majority don't, okay? So if you're, you know, the, the hair color of your, um, you know, the model on the cover isn't exactly the right shade it, it, that it, you know, you've described it, most, most readers don't care, okay? You know, and you'll see it all the time in, on, on covers. Um, so try not to micromanage too much. But what do we need from you? What, what does a cover artist want from you? <laughs> Sorry? The main idea. Main idea. Anything else? Genre, Genre. yes. Some part of your comp Yes, comp covers, yeah. So let's go through them. Your primary genre, we need to know where you're aiming your cover. Um, because we will also, you know, go into your genre, we'll have a look at what, you know, other, you know, best-selling books are looking like and um, you know, try to figure out what your cover might look like you know compared to those other covers a short synopsis a kind of blurb length just to give us an idea of what you know your book is about just a little bit of a description that is fine that's all, all we really need from you if there's something specific you want on the cover so like a character so a physical description of the elements of character appearing on the cover you know, what they look like, ethnicity, hair color, clothing, weapons, weapons and powers. That's really important. Often people, uh, authors often forget to tell me if their character has a magic power or something like that and, you know, what that might look like on a cover. That's, re that, that's really important as well. Uh, if you want a specific scene on the cover, 
Um, you know, think about what that scene might look like and, you know, just give us a you know, brief rundown. We don't necessarily need to read a full chapter, but if you just give us a brief idea of what that scene is. It, we might need to change it slightly to get it looking good on a cover. Um, I did a cover recently um, for uh, a, a sci-fi author and um, he, uh, a ship crashes on a planet and uh, the, cover then, uh, the character then kind of survives that and it's about their journey. And he said, well, it's not really, you know, I need a character on the cover. It's like, okay, well maybe, you know, the character could be jumping out with a big gun and whatnot and, you know, really impactful cover and, and it worked really well. Um, comp covers. So, you know, other um, uh, uh, authors in your genre, you know, some ideas of, you know, what you know, your competitors or, or compatriots, you know, look like, what's selling, um, you know, so, so we can use that as reference. You might say, well, I, re I really like that cover, but can you use that and maybe use an element from this and something along those lines and just gives us an idea of what is in your head. You know, we, need, we do need to know kind of broadly what is, what is going on in your head as regards what your thoughts are about the cover. And then finally, your trust, okay? Um, we, we've done this a lot. I've, met, I've done an awful lot of covers. Uh, and so, you know, work with us, trust us, because ultimately, we want your book to sell, okay? We want your book to do well, okay? And, you know, we will do our best to create a, an amazing cover for you um, that will hopefully sell you millions of books. You know, that's what we want. <laughs> Number three. Um, what, uh, the physical description? Just chat with us is probably the best thing. You know, if we, if we have an idea of what the tropes are, what the genre is, then, you know, we can usually say, well, can you give us a, a physical description of your character, you know, and usually a bit of back and forth, it, you know. Okay, that, that's interesting. I, I, I personally don't do much nonfiction. Um, but again, it's just talking to your cover designer and, you know, they will know, you know, what works best, you know, especially if they're, if they're someone that's done a lot of nonfiction, they'll be able to tell you, like, I don't really think that will work, so maybe we could try this, that kind of thing. So just open a dialogue um, between you and your cover artist. That's <coughs> the best, best way of, of, of sorting that out. So let's talk about the buzzword AI you know, where it's going, um, and maybe what, you know, your, your opinions are, what my opinions are. Um, so AI art is here, you know, it's already amazing, it's getting better every day, and you c as I say, you can't really ignore it, but do we use it? Um, first off, wh which of these is AI generated? All of them. Trick question. Sorry, they're all AI generated. I did those as I was, uh, you know, putting this talk together. Yeah, all AI generated, which tells you, yeah, it is amazing what it can do these days. You know, you even don't get the gammy hands that quite so much that you used to get, you know, with mid-journey images. Um, some authors are, are going all in. So if you look at like Harem Lit, for instance, is, is an obvious one. Um, they're going all in with their kind of um, you know, AI generated covers um, using you know, mid journey and whatnot to, to put these uh, you know, covers together. Um, but um, you know, do you go all in with this? So I, I am interested to know where we are in the room. If you don't want to answer, that's fine because this can be a hot button topic. But broadly, who's in favor of AI art? Okay, I'll, I'll go into it a little bit more in a minute. Yeah, so broadly, so a good, a good, a good few, well, well, I'll talk about that in a minute. In a minute. Um, so who's totally against it? Who's like, I will never use it, I'm never touching it? Okay, cool. And who's somewhere in the middle, undecided? Well, if I'm telling you, I don't care if you use it. Okay. Can I just say this? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, we can talk about that. Personally, I'm somewhere in the middle, okay? It has its uses, in my opinion, 
Um, would I use it for a, you know, to create an entire cover? No, no, I wouldn't at the moment. Um, but I do believe it is something that, in some regards, it does have its uses. Going all in, I'm, I'm, I probably wouldn't advise it. I think it's a little premature. Um, I, you don't know where Amazon's gonna land with it. Obviously, in the publishing process, you've got that little tech tick box now to say whether your cover is AI generated or not. Um, there's court cases you know, regarding copyright and artists who are really not happy with uh, you know, the way AI, AI has potentially harvested their images for obvious reasons. You know, and so you just, I just don't know where it's gonna end up. So for those that are using it, I think it's probably a little premature, maybe. That is my personal opinion. Um, but I do think it has its uses. And the way I would personally use it uh, at the moment, uh, advertising, marketing, social media, it's great for producing those quick one-off images, you know, or for a Facebook ad, that kind of thing. It's brilliant for that. Um, and it can also be useful as uh, to create as like, as like a custom stock image site. So because I do a lot of photo manipulation uh, in my art, so you know, it's taking like a stock image of a city and a stock image of a sky and you know, mixing and blending and all that kind of thing. There are times when you come up against, there just isn't a stock image of that thing that you want and you're looking for it and you can't find it. So sometimes it can be useful with the author's permission, I would never do it without asking, that you can create, like for instance, one of the things that there's not a lot of stock images for is, and I use this on my crime uh, books, is that you know, the, a, a man in silhouette walking away from the camera there's, you know, that looks like a detective. There's not a lot of images, it's very limited choice, and I've used them all at this point. Um, <laughs> and so it becomes a point where it's like, oh, I just need something new. And so in that regard, you know, you can use it to create a, you know, a, a figure, you know, walking away from the camera. Um, but then you, you take that into Photoshop, you cut it out, you get rid of the gammy hands, you do a head swap, and you, you're changing things around, paint over it maybe. And then it's not an AI image anymore. You've cut, you know, it's, it's no different to taking, you know, a stock image and you know doing a head swap on it and putting, you know, different hands on or weapons on in their hands or anything like that. It's the same thing, but it's custom to what you want. Yes. No, because it's it's not used that in that regard. The AI hasn't generated the image. It's you have to look at the a Amazon's description of, of what they view as AI generated, and that is when the AI has done the work and you've done nothing for or you've just slightly modified it. Whereas with this, the AI has, has done a little bit on the side, and no, you don't need to check the box on, yes, I've used co you know, AI in my, on my cover. Is it almost like a stock it's basically a stock image, that, that's it. You know, and it's totally fine to use it that way. Um, so well, how would you quantify that? Yeah. Well, it's it's really hard to quantify. But the main thing is, you know, if you're just using it, you know, for one little element in the in the cover, then it's fine. I mean, I, I that's not AI an AI generated cover, and that's the difference in it. So if you're going to use it just a little bit for stock art. I think that's okay, personally. But again, my advice is if you're worried, talk to your cover artist, express your position, find out theirs, okay, and then come to an agreement. You know, it may be that you want to you have you want to use a bit of AI on your cover, and that's fine. You know, but your cover artist may be like, no, I, I'm never going to use it, and that's fine too. You say you need, it's dialogue, it's talking to them, you know, and, and get to a kind of agreement with it. You know, and if there are cover artists that occasionally does use it, then say, I, I don't want you to use that, please, you know, and that will be fine. Um, but I'm right at the end now. Um, we've got eight minutes left, so if anyone's got any questions, I'd love to take those questions. Okay, if you could go, go to the mic, that would be lovely. Thank you. It wasn't really a question.
question. I just wanted to continue on the thought of like when you use Photoshop to create a box. Yeah. Um, that's kind of how I'm seeing how you're using AI. It's like. To create a box. Uh, you know, if you just use the draw tool that creates a, a perfectly symmetrical box, because yeah. you didn't sit there with the little pencil tool and I draw see. Yeah, out yeah, your yeah. box. Yeah. <laughs> but so I think it's just a tool. like. It is a tool. Like that. I mean, that, that's what AI is. And we've all been using it for ages, and you know, spell check and all that kind of thing. We've all been using AI for a long, long time anyway. Um, it's not going to go away. It's only going to get better. Um, and while I wouldn't recommend using it to create an entire cover, sometimes it can be useful to help with elements that you can't get in any other way. Uh, my question, uh, two of them, I'll make them quick. The first one is how frequently do you change covers if you know that your cover needs to be changed? Or, and or how soon after a release do you realize you, you want to tweak a cover? Uh, me personally or what I would recommend for authors Both. to do? <laughs> <laughs> um, or what you would recommend since times are short. It, dep it depends. I mean, obviously, tropes change, you know, um, you know, trends change. And if you notice that, um, you know, your cover is starting to not fit in mm -hmm. with your genre anymore, then obviously it's probably a time for a change okay. at that point. And then talk to your cover artist. Right. Um, but... You know, covers can last years at this point. Um, you know, with my cover that I was going through there, I just can't leave it alone. I, okay. you know, it's just one of those well, that I, I, I constantly. I want to update several covers now because I could never find stock images of people of color that matched my work. Yes. But this is why I've leaned so much into AI because now I can create these people yeah. that I could never find. So some that I knew I really wanted people on, but I couldn't just find a particular woman on a motorcycle who looked yeah. like me, now I can just create that. Yes, yeah, that's a perfect example of how it okay. might be really useful uh, you know, to create something that yeah. you can't get in any this other way. Impossible. The only um, images I could find would be corporate. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So. Um, I mean, that said, you know, it is possible to you know, take the head from you know, one model and put it on an, another model and you know, you know, use Photoshop to adjust. The skin and yeah, to adjust. <laughs> you can, you can do it. You can yeah. adjust the skin color to match. You know, between different parts, you could use an arm from one person and a head from another. You know, what? it is possible to do that. <laughs> um, and the, the other thing, obviously, is you know, if you've got the money to spend, you know, someone like myself or Jean, you know, we can do Photoshop photo shoots for you. Nice. But that is a more expensive option yeah. to get something custom. Yeah. You know, that you want. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, thanks. I uh, write in the horror genre, and a lot of times the covers tend to kind of bump up with other genres, but have its own specific tropes. Um, mm -hmm. I've been working with the same cover designer for three years. They've done five of my books. Absolutely love them. It does take us maybe like seven or eight times to get toward the final yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, is that too long? What can I do to speed up the process and help them with that? Um, as well, because I think I'm one of their only horror clients beside Dean Koontz. At the <laughs> so. Okay. Um, it's, I would say it's just a, you know a dialogue. Do you have a good relationship? Wonderful relationship. Yeah, they're fantastic. Okay. Yeah. Um, it, it's really hard to say other than you know just talk to them. Um, you know, if you've got a concept, an idea in your head, you know, really try to hammer that down in the in the early dialogue. You know, to get as close as you can to it before they start, you know, clicking away at the mouse, using the pen or whatever. Um, you know, just do it in the dialogue early on to try and really hammer down what you know it is. Because sometimes, you know, an, an author will come to me and it's really hard to um, you know understand what it is they want. Um, you know. Perhaps they're not explaining it properly, you know, because although we tend to be good with words as authors, you know, sometimes just getting something from your head onto the page can be quite hard. But it's just dialogue, just, just talking, really. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Um, how much do you use, like, concept art, and what's the best way to encourage someone to maybe not get too committed to a certain idea uh, do you find that like I know sometimes when I see something right you get that in your head and now all of a sudden it's like 
everything you want it to be that even if that's not that great right maybe this other option is better so yeah. are you kind of for multiple concept art as options or sometimes not? yeah it depends again everyone's different um you know some authors have a really strong idea of what it is and can you know tell me what it is really clearly um and some really struggle and it takes a lot of back and forth and to really hammer out and sometimes you know come to me with an idea that's just it, i can see it's not going to work and so sometimes i just have to say look can we reconsider and maybe you know go back and have a look at what other authors are doing and maybe you know rethink this and and start again you know again it's dialogue just talking with with you know your cover artist to kind of really you know, hopefully a good cover artist will be able to tell you when they think are you sure that might not work and but sometimes you know it is about creating a couple of sketches you know really quick things that you can just go well there, there's two options what do you think Um, I try to keep I try to keep it as few as possible because the longer it takes the more it costs um, so I try to do that in the dialogue early on and try to you know really get a good idea of what where we're going before I start you know actually you know, creating it um, so I've got a minute and a half left We've got a question, one question from um, a viewer on Facebook. My wife is a cover artist. In what way or platform would you recommend is the best way for her to reach authors needing an artist? Um, we tend to join the same groups that authors do. Um, so, you know, there are very, I, I'm, there's usually kind of files and stuff on Facebook groups. I think 20 Books has like a, a, a vendor kind of you know, file that you can open up, and it's got you know a whole load of us that have you know put our names down on that. Um, so yeah, you know, we're usually around in the author community. We, we're usually not too hard to find. Um, but yeah, uh, otherwise searching uh, Google that kind of thing. When you get into certain areas like science fiction, fantasy, urban fantasy, etc., when I looked at cover art, especially science fiction. It, they're all starting to look the same. Spaceship, yeah, in a uniform, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, swords, yeah. wearing certain stuff. Do you guys track this at all and say maybe it's time for something slightly? <laughs> I wish I could be a trendsetter in that way. <laughs> um, yeah, um, it's, we d we don't have that power to kind of <laughs> set the trends and the tropes. We tend to follow more than anything. Uh, three seconds. <laughs> Those of us that are feel backed in the corner financially, is there software that you recommend kind of looking into for utilizing a cover? Um, Cre sorry. Creation of a cover. Creation of a cover. Yeah. I mean, I use Photoshop, okay. um, but there are free ones. GIMP is a free one that does pretty much the same thing. So, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>